Oshin, just to talk about Armagh this season, um, Division 1 North with Monaghan, Tyrone and Donegal and then a, an Ulster draw against Antrim and then hopefully Monaghan or Fermanagh to come after that, assuming that, that they win against the McGinley side. Where are you with Armagh this season? Are you encouraged by where they've been going in the last year? So obviously we don't know based on the last several months because there's been no football. Uh, I suppose I would have been initially encouraged uh, last year in particular in the fact that we've probably been trying to get to Division 1 realistically now for five years. Uh, and we eventually got there. Um, and we fought, had to fight hard to get there. I think uh, the Saints initially um, were encouraging. And I think, uh, you know, Derry in Derry was a tricky assignment. Uh, particularly playing against a team that Rory Gallagher has set up the way he set them up. Uh, and I might go through that game and I thought to myself, you know, there's a real opportunity here to go and, and at least put a lot of pressure on, on Donegal. From the throw-in, that didn't really materialise. And, uh, and it was a point way to go out of the championship. It's disappointing to go out of the championship, but I think it was more so the manner of how they went out, we went out of the championship and we didn't look competitive, as I say, right from the throw-in. Uh, so I think we have a lot of work to do. I think our games, uh, hopefully our games, but certainly our, our game in the league against Monaghan is crucial. I think whoever wins that game will stay in Division 1 because I think, I personally think Tyrone and Donegal maybe are a little bit ahead of uh, ahead of Armagh and Monaghan and you would expect uh, a little bit of bounces for Tyrone Concern, you know, there's new management after all this time. Fergal Logan and Brian Dew are in, so you'd expect some sort of bounce. Uh, you look at the personnel that they've added to their to their squad already. But um, as far as I'm concerned, I think it'll come down to that game against Monaghan as to whether we can maintain our Division One status. And I think that that is crucial for us. Hoping that next year will be a full uh, round of fixtures, a full program of of league fixtures, and then you know you you go into the championship and. There's a realistic opportunity in that side of the draw to get to an also final, and I think that has to be the goal. That has to be a minimum now for for, for Alma, and I think, uh, as I say, probably two games against Monaghan are going to basically uh, decide decide your season and, and and the way you look back in your season at the end of it. I saw some quotes uh, from you recently in some article. Now I know you don't like talking about your own team and All Ireland's E one and comparing them with the current team, and that's that's very fair to do, but to get that little bit of nastiness that you had. Is that something that this Armagh team could do in a quick enough sort of a turnaround to take that next step? Because they probably do need it. Yeah, I think you know, I've, I've, I've said recently that Armagh aren't uh, horrible enough to play against. And uh, I'll stick with that. I think teams like playing against them. And I think that's not something Kieran McGinney and those players would want to hear. Uh, but I think that's the reality of it coming coming from last year. Uh, I think that uh, an inject an injection of confidence, and I, I I thought genuinely that that would have came by getting into Division One last year. I think an injection of confidence this year can be, as I say, maintaining that Division One status, but also uh, you know uh, getting to to an also final and. The only way you know Armagh can do that is is become, as I say, a little bit more difficult to play against. Uh, defensively, I think it'll play with a little bit more grit, and uh, and I think from here up, I, I don't think anybody in the country, you know, uh, pundits, fellow players, management, I don't think anybody doubts the 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 quality that Armagh have from eight to fifteen. And a few guys coming off the bench, but there is a question mark on 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 how, as I say, horrible and how good we are defensively. So, I think that's the real challenge for Amal this year is to see can can they can they create create that balance. Then you you just wouldn't know. You know what's Calvin lost. You just wouldn't know what 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 happened. I mean, hopefully, uh, Tyrone and Donegal knock seven lumps of whatever out of each other and by the time you know I'm on one and play either one uh, you know they are they have a lot of football played and, and maybe that's the opportunity just like Cavan last year to, to nick an Ulster title And you mentioned Tyrone there Fergan Logan and Brian Dewar have come in 
do you see this as a, as a good step for Tyrone? And then I, I can't help but think if Cahill McShane is fully fit and Conor McKenna gets another few months of, of playing football, that they could be a serious uh, proposition this year if Lohan, or, sorry, Logan and Dewar hit the brown, uh, ground running. Yeah, I think the first thing is that, again, I just mentioned the bounce. And the reason why I mentioned the bounce is because Mickey was there for such a long time. Um, and I suppose the, Mickey would have stuck to the... He, he definitely mixed things up at different things, but he stuck more or less to the tried and trusted methods. I think the methods, uh, even around training and, and how they train, would be different. Um, obviously, Peter Donnelly's uh, back in there. You know, the Bills game. We've heard about all the good work uh, that he has been doing, so uh, that's definitely a plus for him as well. Um, but I think he might be a little bit differently than they have done. Uh, I imagine that you know they certainly will hit the ground running, and I think they'll be a lot more positive. I think they'll realise now when they look at their squad that um, they will feel is that you know, that they have uh, serious talent uh, from me at all now. You could probably even add in their two wing-backs to that. So, uh, I would say that uh, Tyrone looked to me the most interesting proposition of all the teams in the country, as in, you know, what the reaction will be to the two boys. And I think that will be positive, even so much so that, you know, already they've got someone who walked away on the a little bit of from from minus and twenty, so uh, yeah, you can imagine that Toronto will be a bit of a different team, uh, but I think there will be an exciting proposition uh, this year, and I'll just be really interested from from the get go if they, as you say, if they can hit the ground running. Yeah, because they were very unfortunate to draw Donegal first round last year and no back door, because. You know, they also have Dara Canavan coming through as well. If Everton clicked, do you actually see Tyrone being good enough to put it up to Dublin and, you know, leave and beat them? Uh, I'll be, the one place that I, I continually look at, at Tyrone and have is the middle of the field. And if, if, if Morgan is closed down on kickouts and he has to go, like if you look at, you know, Cluxton, if he's, if he's closed down, he sticks one one up in the air to Brian Howard, Brian Howard or Brian Fenton, uh, McCarthy to Kenny. You know, there's options there. Uh, I don't think those options are as plentiful for um, for Tyrone as what they are for for some of the other teams. And I think that has sort of been their Achilles heel. I think uh, last year you're 100 percent right when you know when that that Donegal game could have went either way. It was it was uh, it was the goal, uh, was it McGee scored the goal or was it Lang? I'm not 100% sure. Um, but uh, that goal was the real difference between the teams and that came uh, from a lapse in concentration in the thrown forward line that it went from one side of the pitch to the other. It was quick kick out and, uh, and away they went. Morgan, um, wasn't so, it actually? Sorry? Was, was it Peter Morgan wing back? He's Pell of Morgan, that Pell of Morgan, that's who it was, and uh, you know, and I think uh, you know when you when you look at little lapses of the gap, but I just think that you imagine them in Crow Park, Dublin pushed up on them, and them, are, you know, I see that the issues are, but that issue might not be as pertinent if you like in uh, in the Ulster Championship because because I think uh, a lot of the time they're coming up against Lake for Lake, um, so. All the teams going into this championship and how they will will react, but look at they're in a they're in a tough side of the draw. Donegal have to be hurting, not just from last year, from the last three years, not winning games that they really should have won. Tyrone up in uh, Bally Buffet in the in the Super Eights, Mayo, Cavan last year. That's three years in a row, and I'm sure they don't want to make it four. And and if I look at you know squad wise, who has the best squad? Um, in in Ulster, you would have to say that it's Donegal, but um, their inability to win those uh, big games and the crucial games has left a bit of a question mark over them. Now, why do you think that's happened? I mean, they've even brought in Stephen Ratchford there in the last year or so. 
you would have thought his experience in big games with Mayo against Dublin and how far they pushed them, that that would help them on again. And they have so much talent, like you said. So is there a bottom line or recurring issue there for Donegal? I think I think it 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 very quickly beca- became I think it very quickly became mental with them. So I think you know the the game that they were four points up in Super Eights against Tyrone and the capitulators, and I think a lot of their issues have stemmed from what what happened that day. Um, and I think you know when it was when they when they're put under a huge amount of pressure. And I think I look back to Mayo, how Mayo um, quite physical with them. And I think, again, uh, Cavan did the same last year. And I think they targeted a lot of the big players. Uh, if you had to say to me last year that uh, Langan, uh, McGee, uh, McHugh and Murphy would all be completely taken out of the game by Cavan. I wouldn't have thought that that was humanly possible, but that's exactly what happened, and and that's why uh, they weren't able to get over the line. But I think there's a little bit of of scar tissue in there now from the fact that they have lost those last three games. Do you think Cavan can back this up? Like, I mean, it was a win for most of the country out of nowhere. Maybe they, I'm sure they had the belief themselves, though. I think if Cavan had to get anybody else other than Tyrone in the first round, if you look at Cavan's record against their own in the Ulster Championship it is horrendous <laughs> horrendous going back a long time uh, even in the in the back door system they've taken a couple of hammerings from them so um, it, it's not it's it's not like it's not impossible for Kevin to back it up uh, but I would just say that Mickey Graham was looking at the wrong going look I'll take anybody but let us get a game under our belt before we, we play the likes of Throne. You know, when he goes out of the hat against Throne, he's in the same side of the draw as Donegal. You know, if they come through and they were to play Cavan, can you imagine, you know, the, um, they wouldn't need motiv- mo- much motivation, basically, to play in that game. But I think um, I think there's a possibility that, that, that Cavan uh, will improve and get better. I think there's a few more players, you know, who've come back from injury or into that panel. And uh, again, they'll be hard to they'll be hard to dispatch. But I think again, just Throne's record, and uh, it's very hard to to avoid the weight of that record um, against Cavan. I think that makes life really difficult for Cavan. But it's not impossible for them to back it up because. That. And I think maybe that they feel as if they maybe didn't do some just themselves justice against Dublin and would maybe like a, a, another crack at at going up and challenging those teams. But so it's definitely not uh, impossible that they could do it, but unlikely considering the state of the draw they're in. I'd love to ask you about pretty much every county in the country, but I know you have to go and do a few more interviews. So, uh, Oshie McConville, really appreciate it. And uh, just a reminder that uh, External Problem Gambling provides support for anyone affected by problem gambling and offers remote services by fully qualified and accredited addiction counsellors here. Um, uh, so thanks again, Oshie McConville, really appreciate it. Thanks very much, Shane.